we have to turn to a serious story that emerged out of nowhere today. TMZ had the first report that Henry Ruggs, the Raiders' second-year receiver, first receiver taken in the 2020 draft, was involved in a serious car accident in Las Vegas. The photos from the scene suggested significant damage to two vehicles. Initially, there was no indication as to Ruggs' injuries or whether anyone was suspected of using alcohol or drugs before too long the Las Vegas police issued a statement that Ruggs will be charged with felony DUI resulting in death. One of the participants in that collision, the driver of the other car, the car that was allegedly rear-ended by Ruggs' Corvette, died. The Toyota RAV4 was actually on fire. They found the deceased inside the vehicle after the fire was put out and Ruggs will be charged with felony DUI resulting in death. That is a Class B felony under Nevada law with prison time between 2 and 20 years. We don't know any details about blood alcohol level, whether there was some other substance at play. All we know is the police learned enough initially to come to that conclusion. Usually it doesn't happen that quickly. I remember with the Britt Reed situation, it took a couple of months yeah before he was charged. So whatever they found, whatever they concluded, whatever they decided based upon the initial information led them to decide that there will be a charge. Now, it's not formal yet, but for the police to say that so quickly, it must tell me they have a pretty strong reason to believe, Shireen, that there was some sort of impairment. Yeah, it, it's a really sad story, Mike. And unfortunately, we hear this far too much with athletes and, and otherwise just out in the public. And this should never happen anymore with Lyft, with Uber, with everything else we have now. It's so easy to get a ride home. And the fact that we keep seeing this is just unfathomable to me. But here we are again. Nothing good, as we know, happens at 3.40 a.m., which is when this happened, and it did. But there was no reason, if he was impaired, for him to have been driving. And I think that's the bottom line in all this. And hopefully this serves as a lesson to others. If you're drinking, out drinking, and having a good time, nothing wrong with that. But just get a ride home. Please get a ride home. There was a time before the rise of the drive-sharing services, ride-sharing services, whatever they're generically called uber lyft etc that the nfl players association yeah. made a service available where all you had to do was call a number and they would send a car and pick you up players were wary of that because they thought somehow that confidential information would get back to the teams and you'd get in some sort of trouble or you'd be flagged in some way so they didn't want to use it that's not an issue now we've all got it on our phone all we got to do is press the button. It's in there. It, it almost feels like you're getting something for free. It's such a weird feeling when you press a button, yeah. a car picks you up, takes you somewhere, you get out. The transaction automatically ends up being charged to your credit card or your debit card on file. It is just a weird sensation to do that. But it's easy. There's no excuse for it. And you'd have to be extremely impaired not to be able to pull up Uber or Lyft on your phone and press the button. There is no excuse. There never was an excuse. It's just easier now than ever to, to get home some other way, and you can take an Uber back to your car that you left wherever you were if and when you were somewhere and you were consuming alcohol or other substances to the point where you were impaired. So there is no excuse for it. It's a tragic situation. And this is the third time since 1998 that an NFL player has been involved in something like this, where you have an allegation of DUI resulting in death. Leonard Little of the Rams in 1998, 47-year-old Susan Gutweiler died because he was driving drunk. He ultimately was suspended eight games by Commissioner Paul Tagliabue. And then in 2009, Dante Stallworth, then with the Browns, was charged with manslaughter in Florida and DUI involved in that and Roger Goodell suspended him for a full year and in this case paid leave has emerged since the last situation and Henry Ruggs could find himself I mean he's got bigger problems right now he's got real life problems and he's going to be dealing with the guilt and the responsibility if he was indeed impaired even if he wasn't impaired it was a rear end collision and one of the first things I learned when I learned how to drive is if you hit somebody from behind, it's your fault because you always need to be far enough back that you yeah. can stop no matter what happens with the car in front of you. 
uh, he's got to carry that guilt around. But um, if he's officially charged with a felony, Shireen, he's eligible to be put on paid leave until the prosecution ends. At that time, he would be looking at, I assume, the same punishment as Dante Stallworth, a one-year suspension. And I'll go back, I'll add two others to your list, Mike, both Cowboys, Dwayne Goodrich, who spent a good amount of time in jail for his, and also we can't forget Josh Brent, uh, who killed a teammate while driving drunk. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, Dwayne Goodrich has turned his life around and went back to the University of Tennessee, got his degree, and has been speaking. He's on the speaking tour and says he's doing it for his victims, and he speaks to college teams he speaks to nfl teams and i would like to see every and i don't know what they do but i would like to see every nfl team bring in a Dwayne goodrich and have them speak to the team about what he went through and how his life changed and more importantly how the lives of others changed they will never come back and he talks openly about that and the weird thing about this mike is Henry Ruggs celebration is he holds up three fingers and the reason he holds up three fingers is because his teammate his former teammate Rod Scott died in a car accident and he wore number three so he holds up those three fingers whenever he celebrates so he as much as anyone should know about car wrecks and what they can do and not driving drunk and yet here he is in this situation and we'll see what happens to him We've seen some guys come back and play after this, Leonard Little being the, being the case. Others have not, Dwayne Goodrich being the case. So I would like to see if somebody truly is driving drunk, I would like to see their career be over. But I know that sometimes guys are too talented and they get second, third, fourth chances in the NFL like Leonard Little did. Yeah, Josh Brent's career basically ended. He was not in pads for 18 months, and uh, eventually he had – a suspension on top of everything else of of 10 games and uh i don't know that he ever actually played again after that if he did he didn't play for very long but uh th- this is a, a serious moment for the nfl and it is an occasion for everyone and i guess we need a reminder from time to time because as time passes you have you have a new evolution or rise of yeah. of young people who who didn't know about it, who haven't had an experience like that that really wakes them up and serves as a real-life reminder of what can happen. And I think everyone in the NFL should see this as the ultimate proof and indication and encouragement to, number one, not put yourself in that situation at all. Don't drink to excess when you're anywhere but at home where there's nowhere to go. There's no driving to be done. And if you are at a point where you know that you're you're getting beyond where you should be or if you know that's going to be the case make the arrangement ahead of time or have the presence of mind to hit the button and there's also an an obligation of those around the person who's impaired i believe whether it's legal or moral or both to intervene when someone seems to have have had enough Uh, because sometimes the impairment prevents the person from realizing how impaired they are. So uh, it's a shared responsibility and it's a lesson to be learned. And we we uh, extend our thoughts, obviously, to the victim and the victim's family. But also Henry Ruggs is going to go through some trauma here because it wasn't intentional, but it was nevertheless criminal. And he will be paying the price in many different ways, basically for the rest of his life. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.